Green Rising, we're live. Welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. How was your weekend? Was it long enough? Probably not. Weekends usually are not long enough. As we are doing a special edition today of Black History, Black History, and where's my phone? Eight minutes till showtime. So let me do my quick here. And da, 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 da. oh, I need to record it, don't I? Right. That might help, right? Shut up, Tony. Grand Rising. Thank you for joining us this morning on Monday Morning Mindfulness. Oops, get your pen out. You're taking notes all the time. Uh, as we are celebrating Black History Special Edition today on the Female Solution and the Higher Learning Network, Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19. Today we will be discussing Black History They Don't Want You to Know. So be sure and join us as we are joined by Brother Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations. And you will find out information Seven that you did not know. Showtime in about seven minutes until showtime. So please share this. And until then, stay on purpose, stay empowered, stay tuned to higher learning because this is where you get the 411 that they don't want you to know, no, no. And please share and like and subscribe at the Higher Learning Network TV show. Excuse me, Higher Learning YouTube, Higher Learning TV show. Shalom. All righty, now I got that out the way. And it is time for us to go and check our weather, which I already have. But I just want to be sure. Green rising. Thank you for joining us this morning thing. on Monday Morning Mindfulness. Oops, get your pen out here. I'm taking notes all the time. Okie dokie. And that's ready to rock and roll. Oh, I'm so hot. Turn that heat off. I bet y'all won't be. Six minutes until showtime. Do, 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 <laughs> he said, Rawr. Who is hot in here? Can you turn that heat off, please? I'll get up and turn it back on. Mm -mm, I'll be, uh, I'm live just so you'll know. I will be cold in 30 minutes, but let me get to that 30 minutes because right now I'm just hot. You know, they said uh, men don't have those problems. Yes, they do. Y'all need to know. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, we all get them. Oh, and if you haven't been to my, um, if you haven't been to my, um, what do you call it? blog please do go to it you'll be glad you did there's some new information there actually it's about the um, humanitarian who was murdered 55 years ago and we'll be talking about that today so post oh. And so that should be my story. Five minutes until showtime. Five minutes until showtime. Do do do
Three minutes. Three minutes. Until <laughs> Three minutes, y'all. In Korea, in Russia, Yemen, 
Rod Stutz Guten Tag Sie dobre Bonjour Hola Ciao Hasan Wasala Abuaba Hey Leo Sabuna Jambo Shalom. Shalom. Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia. So much for joining me here this morning on the female solution welcome to monday morning mindfulness how you're learning with zelda speaks i'm your host and today is monday february 22nd 2 22 21. happy earth day birthday born day if today's your birthday you're celebrating we're celebrating with you and a very special day because 56 years ago A humanitarian was taken from us. Someone who was trying to make it right for the black people, indigenous people of this country who built this country. And we're gonna be discussing him today. If you want more information, be sure and go to my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. Let us all keep in mind the sick in and the sick and the shut in and those affected by the pandemic in the news today. The Hampton movie, Judah and the Black Messiah. Have you seen it yet? It's on HBO, I haven't seen it yet. But I've been looking at the reviews. 10 million views already, wow. And I am honored to say that the house in which the Black Panthers were killed, that's what it's about, Black history special edition. The elimination of the Black Panthers who were trying to get justice, human rights for people of color. And the house, which is now, uh, it's still on the west side of Chicago and Maywood, they were trying, they are trying to make it a landmark. So go to my blog and you'll see that information there and how you can uh, make a difference. I don't know if it's a vote you can do or anything like that, but it's imperative that you no, have this information. Today I'm joined by Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations, and we will be discussing this matter. And at 9 a.m., we'll be on Clubhouse, so you can join us there if you are an iPhone user. I remember the time sitting in the so many fond memories, sitting in the living room of Mother Hampton, Mrs. Iberia Hampton. She's the mother of. Fred Hampton and Fred Hampton Jr. She's the grandmother. She passed on a few few years back. And their uh, father, Francis, who passed on before Iberia did, uh, Madea, we call her. And just sitting there, just sitting there having conversations. And wow, now they're going to make that uh, 
museum. That's uh, that's powerful. I can't wait to see that. Anyway, if you're listening online, thank you so much for joining us. We're on Facebook.com, HLN TV show. And you see those lo- that uh, three letters, three colors, HLN, you'll know you're at the right place. And that's also our YouTube channel, Higher Learning TV show. And you can join me right here, Facebook.com, Zelda Speaks. Be sure and join us. We're, we're on Pixely.com to P I X E O L Y, Pixely.com. That's uh, a new social media site by uh, the Women's Network Group, Women's Media Group. So you might want to join that too. Everybody's complaining about all the social media lockdowns. Well, now you've got a chance to do something about it. So go sign on at Pixely.com and click, click to K L I K C L I K, click, click.com. Those, those apps are on your phone as well and be sure and download the higher learning network app yes we have an app we'll give you updates and resources that you may or may not have known anything about it and it's available for you so be sure and download the the app it says higher learning network.org and you see that those colors you know you're at the right place and if you are um ever want to watch the show uh, it airs in Chicago Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 1 on Channel 19 and 24-7 on the website, higherlearningnetwork.org, or you can go to our YouTube channel, Higher Learning TV Show. And for those who know me and don't know me, if you uh, have a diabetic in your family, they don't have to die with it. They don't have to get their limbs cut off like they tried to cut my sisters off and my brother died from diabetes too. It's like, Mm-mm, I am not going that route. I drink a nasty drink first thing, every thing in the morning. <laughs> Ah, apple, beet, cucumber, lemon, ginger, kale. Nasty is all outdoors. It's not nasty. It's just an acquired taste. And uh, I drink that every day. And if I can do it, you can do it too. So go to um, diabeticdonut.com and you'll get some information there. And a free download of the um, ebook that I wrote. And it's yours and it's free. Now, if you want to uh, contribute to the airing of uh, to get an ebook that will help the homeless get uh, generators. I wrote an ebook and it's called, I know I should have followed my first mind. How many times have you said that to yourself? Well, when you make a donation to the Higher Learning Network, which is tax deductible, you can get uh, the free, oh, well, it's not free, it's donation uh, for um, the ebook. Douglas Robinson, two twenty, excuse me, two nineteen nineteen. Uh, he was he was uh, murdered in Tent City, right here in Chicago, by another homeless man. And in um, our dedication to the homeless, we are always raising funds for them if they need generators, heat, things of that nature. So if you know of someone who has a hardware store or has generators, then let us know. Hit us up info at higherlearningnetwork.org. And if you notice your your bills are a little high for groceries, well, that's why. And they're going to continue to get high. They're not going to go down. Be sure and check out my tower garden, zeldarobinson.towergarden.com. And if you're in pain, and I'm in no pain today because I did my, what do you call it, the higher learning hip roll. (laughs) I did that already. And uh, I also had my Healy. And this is my Healy. I keep it charged. And, you know, I keep that. On. You go to my site, you'll see that too. That's uh, zelda.now.site. S I T E. Zelda.now.site. And if you are headed out and about today, you'll be glad to know there's not a whole lot of snow. There's no shoveling snow today. 37 degrees and 41 tomorrow. That means I can go play Beat Whist with my friends. Yes. And Traffic and Weather is sponsored by Karen Kelly of iText.com. If you've ever wanted to go anywhere in the world, this is the time to go because people are traveling. You have the choice to stay home or you have the choice to travel. Anyway, you can travel anywhere in the continental USA and Africa, too, and Asia and New Zealand and Australia and Hawaii, any of those other places you want to go. Simply go to iText.com. Be sure and tell them Zelda. Thank you, Richard Pagee. Zelda sent you and you'll have uh, you can get a $100 gift certificate. If you're an entrepreneur or a business owner with a product or a service, you can barter. So why pay cash? 
It said, pay attention or pay cash. I'm paying attention. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. No delays on Metro or CTA, but as we take a look at the expressways, there's a whole other story. Inbound on the Kennedy, it's 20 minutes, 21 on the reverse. In the Edens, it's 22 minutes inbound, 24 on the reverse. On the Eisenhower into the Jane Byrne, it is a hot mess, 50 minutes and 33 on the reverse. On Stevenson inbound, 22, 18 on the reverse. On the Dan Ryan, it is 16 minutes in and 18 minutes on the reverse. There's a jackknife truck at 59th Street, and the ramp is blocked all the way back to 75th Street. So expect delays if you're on the Dan Ryan. On the Bishop Ford and Lakeshore Drive, it is 11 minutes in both directions. And the traffic and weather is sponsored by Karen Kelly of iTex.com. It is 712 and it is time for your morning inspiration. And you know, I've been reading from this book, Black People Invented Everything by Dr. Sujan Kumar Das, D-A-S-S, -S, of the founder of the Solutionary Institute. And he says, investigate the science of self. This is such a, a fascinating book. It just, it just blows me away. Talking about branding and cornrows and Oh, every, everything you can think of about black history is in this book. This is the information that they don't want you to know. Yeah, everything that is was designed in this country was designed by black folks. Let me just share this with you. Black people in Pittsburgh Hill District started the country's paramedic service. And the Black Panthers created the original forms of Head Start, WIC, and other national programs for the poor. Even Memorial Day was started by black people. Yet this history was literally never written. Fortunately, modern day history is now correcting itself. Beginning in the 70s, Dr. Shirley Jackson experienced with theoretical touch tone dialing, the portable fax, caller ID, call waiting, and the fiber optic cable. Without Dr. Jackson, we'd be far from 5G. Meanwhile, black mathematicians like Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson pushed the world forward. Without Otis Boykin, there would be no IBM. Okay. And thus, no personal computers or Macs without Mark Dean. Mark Dean was a young man I met when I spoke. 20 years ago at the National Engineers Association, the PCs would not have an LCD monitor. Black uh, Mark Dean did that, who's still living, and you still know him. Google him, Mark Dean, inventor. Without James E. West, we would not have the modern microphone. How about that? I'm telling you everything. And the kind used today, voice over internet protocol, vo they call it VoIP, V-O-I-P which was first developed by Marion Croak, a sister. Without Lisa Goldbator, there would be no animated GIFs. You know, the little things that pop up on the computer when you send in a message? No GIFs or GIFs. Shockwaves or Hulu. Hulu, who thought? I just had to share that with you. Hulu! Oh, Lord, have mercy. You've been lied to. You've been bam bamboozled. This is the book you need to get. Black People Invented Everything, Dr. Sujan Koss. DOS, D-A-S-S. -S. Now you know what you're going to do. So now that you know, I want you to inhale on that. Take a long, deep breath and prepare yourself to be connected with the part of you that you may or may not connect to often because it is the breath that will assist you in the process of connecting to your higher power. So what we're going to do is breathe in and simply breathe out. So sit up straight in your chair, feet flat on the floor. We will begin the process of simply breathing in and breathing out. In the meantime, enjoy this for just a moment because I want you to And this is Layla Hathaway. I don't own the rights. Just breathe. That's all you got to do. 
just breathe. That's all I want you to do. That's all I want you to do is just breathe. So close your eyes. Sit up straight in your chair and inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. Close your eyes. You should not be looking at me, but the inside of your eyelids as you inhale deeply. Hold it through your nose. And exhale. Once more, inhale deeply. Giving thanks for the power of the breath because it is the breath that will connect you to that which in you, which has all the answers to the questions that you're seeking as you inhale deeply. Giving thanks for the power of the breath, knowing that you are the right place at the right time, doing the right thing because someone somewhere is unable to breathe on their own. And look at you. Breathing all on your own. Not, not a big deal. Try not breathing. See how that feels as you inhale deeply. Hold it. And exhale. As we give thanks for the power of the breath. As it flows in and out of our bodies effortlessly. 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 Inhale deeply. As we connect to the higher self, leaving 3D, moving into 4D, and eventually 5D, where there's no judgment, no condemnation, no nothing, just inhaling. And giving thanks for our connection with our power, our creator, whatever we decide to call he, she, it, God, Allah, Jesus, Budhe, Yudhe, Wabhe, what? Spirit, omnipresence, essence, whatever you choose to call it. Call it breath. Inhale deeply. <sighs> Giving thanks that the power of the breath from flows from the top of our head down through our face and our neck and our shoulders as we inhale deeply. <sighs> Continue breathing, giving thanks for the breath as it continues to flow down through the body, through the chest and the sides and down through the back and the buttocks and the thighs and the hips for those who need to do the higher learning hip roll this morning to keep those hips to keep that body in motion because the 88 year old woman at the gym told me a body in motion what stays in motion as we inhale deeply <sighs> sending love and light and energy to those thighs and those knees and rub those knees and those legs down onto the ankles and the arches and the insteps as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, sending more love and light and energy down through the heels and the arches and the toes and the wiggle those toes. Oh, your feet are smiling. Yes, they love you as you send them love, light and energy, bringing that energy back up through the ankles and the arches and the legs and the knees and the thighs as we inhale deeply. And exhale. As we continue to bring that energy back up through the buttocks and the back and the shoulders as we grab our shoulders and we stretch and give thanks for that energy that is coming up from the back of the shoulders. And sometimes it just sits there on our shoulders, just all that tension as we release that tension by rubbing on the neck and rubbing on the neck as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, giving thanks for the breath of life and squeeze the back of the neck, that vagus nerve right there. Yeah, as we breathe in, rubbing that neck, sending love and light and energy and releasing all the stress. Oh, that feels good, doesn't it? Take another long, deep inhale. And yes, your mind is probably wandering all over the place about your to-do list and the things you got to do and the places you got to go and the people you got to see. And it's okay because that's what the mind does. You simply say out loud to grab its attention, thinking 
and bringing back and say, take another long, deep inhale. Hold it. And exhale, sending love, light, and energy back up through the head and down through the forehead and the chin and the chest and the lungs and the brain and the heart and the liver and the lungs and the assimilation system when we eat something, the digestive system when it digests the food that we've eaten and the elimination system, most importantly, because we got to get it in. What comes in must go out. We give thanks that we are no longer constipated because we take what? Nopalina, flaxseed, chia seed, moringa, sea moss, and a whole lot of other things because we want to keep the system flowing as we breathe in. And as we breathe out, we give thanks for the power of the breath and just marinate in that breath. In that quiet time, ladies and gentlemen, you have just sent signals throughout the entire body as you have activated the happiness gene. Yes, smile, as Dr. Villani Valentine would say, smile at your eyes, at your ears, at your brain, at your heart, at your liver, your lungs. Send them love just by picturing your organs in your mind and sending love with a smile yes sending more love to your liver yes the cleaning agent of the body sending love and a smile to your lungs oh yes sending a smile to your spleen yes I love my spleen. Yes, I love my spine. Oh, they are reacting and they are loving you. Right back as we inhale deep. And as we exhale, continue to breathe and sending a smile and the form of love and light and energy through your breath as you continue to inhale. Hold it. And exhale and just marinate in the goodness of that breath and the love and the light and the energy sent in the form of a smile to each and every muscle, tendon, fiber, ligament, joint in your body as you breathe in and as you breathe out. One more long, deep, inhale deeply. Hold it. And as you exhale, bring the head down, chin to chest, and slowly rotate that head to the left. Slowly, that's why you're sitting up straight so you don't get a crook in your back. And slowly bring it around to the right. Slow down, moving too fast. And slowly bring it around to the front. Head up, inhale deeply. And exhale, bringing your head down, right head, right head, turning your head to the right and slowly bringing it around to the back, slowly. Oh, feeling that stretch, slowly. Oh, yes, that feels so good. Bringing the head back around to the left and around to the front. Head up slowly, inhale deeply. And as you exhale, look to your left as far as you can, feeling a stretch in the right side of the neck and bringing the head back forward. Inhale deeply. And as you exhale, bringing your, turning your head to the right. Ooh, yes, feel that stretch in the left side. Ooh, doesn't that feel good? Especially if you woke up with a crook in your neck. <clears throat> and exhale. Inhale once more, hold it. And exhale. And just marinate in that. See how it feels. Does it feel good to you? It should as you continue to inhale. And exhale. Giving thanks for the power of the breath. 
because it is the breath that will keep you in times of chaos and confusion. And this is something that you can practice on your own. Doesn't take 10 minutes, doesn't take five minutes. You spend as much time or as little time as you want, but the benefits of spending more time will put you in a consistent state of mind that you are in control of whatever is going on in your life, especially if it's chaotic. You simply breathe in and breathe out. And if you got a little fog on your breath, <clears throat> It's good. This is the only one time you cannot brush your teeth and be okay with it. You can have a little funk, a little spike on your breath. Ooh, yeah, baby. All you got to do is inhale and blow out your mouth. And I promise you, well, they will get back. They will step back. They will ease up off you. And you'll be like, yeah, I should have did that a long time ago. So you be sure and share that and other te techniques that for my YouTube channel, Zelda Speaks. And I've put my first video on Zelda Speaks Breathing because I had none. I had Zelda Speaks to you and Zelda Speaks to me. Zelda Speaks to you on YouTube is for the Higher Learning Network channel. So Zelda Speaks is just for you. Okay. So be sure and um, share that with somebody and like and subscribe while you're there. And uh, when you go to the YouTube channel for uh, the Higher Learning Network, have you seen the Fred Hampton movie? And then... Uh, you got to go see it. It's on HBO. We'll discuss that a little later, but be sure and uh, join us tomorrow for self cell care with Jody Susan. She'll be joining us. Our new hostess will be her third show on Wednesday. Naima Latif and Kareem Hamid repairing family relationships on Thursday. It's the women's round table. And I was a guest on last week. If you didn't uh, get a chance to see that uh, very interesting show. So please um, check out last week, last Thursday's show on The Female Solution right here or on Facebook.com, The Female Solution. And on Friday, Health and Wealth is with Liata. On Saturdays, our times uh, are 12 noon until 2 p.m. Uh, Nonviolence with Jana on the first Saturday. On the second Saturday, Love, Joy, and Powers. Third Saturday, move around with Deborah, and she was on just this past Saturday because we're ready to travel. Our next broadcast will, not the next one, but the one after that will be in Florida with our sister Viata, who also does Sunday evenings at 7 um, p.m. on Soul Purpose Healing. If you didn't hear the show last night on Woundology, baby, bye. <laughs> You've got to go. I am making my list of nine things that I want to happen in my life because we've been informed that there, this is a creative, this is a magical time because Metro is not, Metro grade is not, um, however they explain that. You got to go back and listen to last, to last night's show to understand it because I am not the person to explain it, but I got that when she talked about magical moments. So I am making out my list of nine things that I want to happen. So, and I hope that you will do the very same. And one of those is to release the continuous pain that creeps up because I'm hard headed. I, I, I know what my problem is. <laughs> uh, the hip problem that I'm having, I go to my Bible of metaphysics and that would be Louise Hayes, uh, celebrate your life, heal your life actually is too. Um, so I'm reading heal your life. And the issue with um, hips is usually balance. And I know that I have been a little out of balance with my habits, especially where it comes to eating, because I have been eating some processed food that is not agreeing with me. I love this popcorn that I have, and I usually pop my own popcorn and in a hot popper. I have not been eating corn, but any corn is really not good because the body doesn't digest it. I digress. I go there sometimes. But anyway, I know what my issue is. So how you're learning hip roll. I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for keeping me limber. And in addition to the hunter method. And if you go to my blog, you'll see that too. Um, do you hunter .com. So that is it. It is 730. It is now time for our first commercial break before we're joined by Lionel Abdul-Hawk. 
and uh, he'll be with us after the break. So stay close. Hi, I'm Dr. CJ of the Health, where we combine orthopedic manual therapy and neuroscience to treat the whole person. Health tip for the day is keep it moving. Doesn't matter how, just keep it moving doing something you enjoy. Walking, dancing, rolling on the floor with the dogs or kids, really anything. The body clears movement to keep its bones, joints, and the muscles happy. Even our mental health and internal organs and digestive system rely on our movement. Thanks for being a part of the Higher Learning Network from the Female Solution. It was simple blood test and food plan to turn a potential for health your business, your family, and you eliminate toxins. So, good morning. Are you joining us? To nourish your mind, body, okay, and spirit. Okay, bye. Chris here, to learn more. Jody Susan of Susan Essentials is certified by the number one functional medicine doctor on plant-based healing essential oils, which are revolutionizing the way we manage our well-being. Schedule today to take control of your health. You are tuned in to the Social Chicago Book Fair 2020 Vision for Women campaign. That's right. You can support the vision of reviving black literary excellence in the city by simply taking your $20 or more and donating it on our website. Visit www.socialchicagobookfair.com and click the donate tab on our homepage. So give us a call at 646-359-6605 and we welcome you to helping us bring literary life into the South Side of Chicago. We all say we would like to be wealthy, but wealth isn't determined by how much money you have. Wealth is determined by your power to define what money is. The dictionary defines money as something used as a way to pay for goods and services and to pay people for their work. So how would you like to have access to an unlimited source of money? Money that is not taxed by the government. Money that increases as you share the opportunity with others. Money that you can use to pay for goods and services and pay people for their work. I'm talking about Bitcoin. It's the future of independent wealth building. Bitcoin is the new money that you control. Get started building your wealth. Call 312-849-3456. That's 312-849-3456. Are you constantly arguing with your spouse? Are your children misbehaving and acting out? Is someone in your family being enjoyed? Have you been a victim of domestic violence? Are you grieving in the loss of a loved one? Well, let's help you restore serenity to your life. At Serenity Family Social Services, we have a saying that good mental health is a result of emotional well-being. Our goal is to fish you and your family in removing emotional distress and restoring harmony and balance to your lives. We offer individual, couples, and family counseling. I'm Howard Rear, CEO of Civility Family Social Services. Call us again at 312 315 That's 312-315-4820. Grand Rising, and thank you for joining us back here on The Female Solution. Welcome to Monday Morning Mindfulness. Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks. We're just here to start your week off with the Mindfulness Stress Relief Session. Happy Earth Day, birthday, born day, if today is your birthday. Uh, let us keep in mind the sick and the shut-in and those affected by the corona pandemic. In the news, you already know about the Hampton movie. It's taking place, the uh, Judah the Black Messiah has had over 10 million views. It's now playing on HBO. And be sure and follow us after the show at 9 a.m. We'll be on Clubhouse with executive producer Naima Latif of The Female Solution, and we'll be discussing that. So be sure and join in. But right now we're joined by... You, if you're listening online, you'd like to join the conversation, 515-605-9325, press 1 to speak, 
We're on Facebook.com, Zelda Speaks, as well as Facebook.com, HLN TV Show, and our YouTube channel, which is Higher Learning TV Show. Let us remind you to download the Higher Learning Network TV Show app. So you just go to the App Store and download Higher Learning Network. When you see this logo right here, the HLN, you'll know you're at the right place. Let us welcome to the microphone, my brother of the microphone, my spiritual brother, which I'm honored to have here this morning. He usually joins us every first Monday of the month. But since we are celebrating Black History Month, this is a very special edition because there is information that is available to you that you don't know anything about. And that's why we are here to remind you and to enlighten you. So please welcome to the podium our very own brother, Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations. Thank you, Lionel, for joining us this morning. Oh, it's my pleasure. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, keep your audience. Love the fact that. Go ahead. Yeah, we hope to should be able to share some uh, some insights that will uh, enrich us during this Black History Month. Mm hmm. Indigenous People Month because we're not black. That's just a label that they came up with to further throw us off off guard. Black. You see this head wrap? That's black. This and this don't look nothing alike. I'm, I'm yeah, with. I, I like to look at it. In the, I like to look at it in the context of the uh, ancient Kemetic uh, people who uh, lived in the land that used to be called Kemet before it was changed to Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who built the pyramids and so forth. Uh, the, uh, the great statue of uh, monument of. Uh, uh, who are the cat, uh, who are on the horizon. Um, they, Kemet, uh, from what I understand in my research, meant the land of the black people. Mm. And um, um, it was a time when everybody was black. Mm. There was nothing else. So um, I can relate to it in that context. Uh, it goes back before uh, this racist uh, application of the term uh, came into being, so I identify with it from that perspective. So there's some there's some positivity in it, but for those who didn't know, they needed to know. So that's why I had to share that. So thank you so very much for for sharing that insight because it, it's crucial. People need to know what they don't know and how that affects us in the future as well as right now. It's definitely important right now because um, in the context of ancient Kemet, uh, the land that is now called Egypt, uh, there's this whole concept of the, the, the monument called Haru al uh, um they call the Sphinx. It's mm -hmm. about, and the thing that they call the, uh, the Washington Monument. Uh, <clears throat> Which is the original one <coughs> uh, in uh, New York, uh, uh, the Vatican, uh, all over France and other parts of Europe. Uh, they were actually taken from the temples in Kemet, uh, ancient Egypt, uh, and actually moved to these various places as uh, symbols of conquest and symbols of. Uh, trying to hold on to the, the powerful legacy of uh, that that civilization, which is uh, one of the hallmarks of human achievement mm -hmm. on the planet. And uh, it's a symbol that the thing they call the, both the thing they call the Sphinx and the thing they call the, the Washington Monument are symbols of the resurrection, uh, which is from my studies, uh, is being is happening right now. That uh, the 21st century is uh, is uh, part of this whole movement that has been going throughout history of a promise, a prophecy, if you will, 
mm-hmm. that the resurrection of that civilization, which was going to go completely down to the point of virtual death, uh, is going to be resurrected. Mm-hmm. And that this is the time for that to happen. And, and it coincides with what the Christians say about Judgment Day Armageddon. This is what the astrologers are saying about the galactic alignment that's happening. That it's all uh, coming together with uh, the, uh, uh, a way of establishing that some major changes are taking place in the universe. Mm-hmm. And it is affecting us here on the planet. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, this, is that, this is definitely, there's far more to it, and it, it definitely bears a great deal of study and reflection and prayer uh, to get better understanding of what's going on in this modern world. Which, uh, you know, I think uh, hopefully I'm able to share that and get people started to spark some light on the subject that will get people interested enough to do so. And to keep us conscious, because there are always efforts to keep us unconscious. And what do you mean by this? What do you mean by this, Zell, to keep us unconscious, to continue offering us distractions? I have people who send me because they love sharing information and I greatly appreciate it. And sometimes... Uh, they go a little bit overboard. They just keep sending and sending. And, you know, so my phone pings all day long. And sometimes I want to say stop sending. But the minute that I decide to do that, I look up and it's information that I need and I need to share with others. So to know that these all these distractions, all the news that you see, all the text that you get, all that information is sometimes a distraction because the answers to the questions, you already have them, but they've been buried and you didn't know it. And it takes shows like this and a guest like Brother Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations to continue to cover up, to, uh, cultivate the community, to give us the information and the insight that we need. If I could do anything at all, I want to spark people's interest. Yes. Uh, so, because more you, more, you know, nobody can really give you the information as much as you have to put forward the effort yourself in order to really get the blessings. Uh, like I was often say about uh, the acts of worship, uh, whether it be prayer or doing good deeds or, or study or learning. Uh, strengthening the mind and the will. Uh, if you don't do the work, you ain't gonna get the benefit. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't help for someone to tell you what's right. If you're not interested in what's right yourself enough to really do what's right, you're not gonna get the blessing. Amen. Uh, from it. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> that's the way the Creator, Allah, has set it up. Uh, you reap what you sow, and the, and the effort that you put into it, the sincerity with which you apply yourself, is measured more than the actual work that you do. So it's it's uh, but the one actually feeds into the other. If you sincerely try, and if you don't get what you try for, the Creator will reward you for the effort that you make, mm. and. Uh, that's, that's, that's justice. That's, that's, that's supreme justice. And at least you do get credit for the effort. Now you get a better understanding of what is meant by I'll give you E for effort. Because a lot of times people don't even try. They just give up. If you just feel so overwhelmed. And there's a lot of that feeling going on right about now because we don't realize that we're being as Brother Malcolm would say, we're being bamboozled. We're being told a story that is not necessarily the truth. How do we decipher the truth, Lionel? How do we do that? Well, you know, it, 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 for me, you know, I, my name, uh, I'll go hot. 
means the servant of truth. Uh, it translates to mean the servant of truth. It also associated with sincerity and honesty. Uh, but uh, the idea is that we have to we have to uh, genuinely want it. We have to genuinely seek it. That knowledge is power. The greatest thing that we have, the greatest force in the universe, uh, is the force of consciousness, which comes, which is what, what the Creator is. All consciousness is borrowed or uh, as a gift from the Creator to be uh, challenged uh, by the material world. Mm. And, the, and the, the spirit is very, very weak when it is born, but it grows stronger through the challenges. Mm. And we all, we, you know, that which gives you strength, that which nourishes, that which fortifies life, uh, is the measure of whether or not it's good or evil. If it degenerates life, if it affects life in a way that makes life more difficult in the sense of being more perilous, uh, weakening the will, uh, undermining the functions of life, uh, then it is not good, it is evil. And there are those who have made their career, their life mission to gain from the misery of others, to profit from other people's hardships. In fact, they actually create the hardship in order to be able to profit from it. Mm. And this is where we have been in the modern world. That's what we have come to in the modern world. Uh, people call it the devil. People call it Satan. People, some people just call it exploitation, slave masters, uh, people who willfully uh, work to profit from other people's pain and suffering. And uh, that is uh, where we have been, but the concept of the resurrection of the dead, the concept of the establishment of justice, heaven on earth, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, is the promise, it's the prophecy that of this 21st century that is being manifested every day by the this, by the fall of this modern world's ideology and philosophy of life that has people to the point where they don't care about nothing. They only care about themselves. They only care about making uh, themselves and their particular group, their family, their tribe, their nationality the best, and they don't really care about anybody else. In fact, they seek to exploit everybody else for the benefit of their group, and that is on the way out. That is not the way the world began, and it is not the way the world is going to end. <clears throat> it is going to change. There is a resurrection taking place as we speak. Mm. So things and you will hear the truth, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You will hear it and you will know it. And if you trust your inner gut, your instinct, your spirit guide, what whatever you want to call it, when you when you hear it, you'll know it. You always know the truth, because the truth the truth is in you. You were born with the truth. They just share all these distractions with us to deter us from the truth. You'll know it. You can feel it. You can feel it in your bones. It's energy. Your electricity. So how can you not know? If you just join the conversation, we're speaking with Brother Lionel Abdul Hawk today, co-host of uh, excuse me, community cult of community cultivations, and he's my guest today here on the Female Solution. And we're discussing Black history. You know, things they don't want you to know. We'll keep you distracted. Brother Malcolm X was a humanitarian. And that's one of the things that people overlook in his humanitarian uh, activism. He was just not a, 
a, a Muslim. He was he was a man of an integrity. He was a man of honor. Fifty six years ago on this date, you will see him yeah. and what he was going through at that yeah. time. For such as a time as this, go ahead, Lionel. Well, you know, part of part of uh, the reason why I wanted to call in today was not just because he was assassinated on this day, but uh, we uh, we wrote a couple of reviews. Uh, one we called "To Kill a Martyr," mm. uh, and uh, I think that kind of speaks volumes. Um, in terms of understanding uh, the depth uh, uh, that we have to go to really understand what it is that uh, has happened, uh, not just in the context of this individual's life and legacy, but uh, also in the context of the, the ancient Kemetic uh, revelations about uh, the um, the resurrection. Uh, I don't call him Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. I think it's an insult. Mm. I think it's an insult. I think it's an, it is it is it is part of the uh, it is it is the it is the part it is the main part of the main objective of those who who uh, assassinated him was to kill what it is he was trying to do or what he represented. Uh, he was not a kid. He changed his name <clears throat> by the time he was killed. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was because he changed his name mm -hmm. and the consciousness that he had evolved to that they feared the most. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is that which they were, uh, their objective was to stop where he was trying to take us. Mm -hmm. uh, but his, his conversion his transformation from Malcolm X to El Haj Malik Shabazz was such a monumental and uh, triumphant resurrection of a consciousness that those who uh, create this situation in the modern world to exploit people, to deceive people, uh, saw it as being a, a, a major role to their uh, continuing to do what they were doing if they had allowed people to even recognize mm. that he had changed from, Mal from Malcolm X to Malik Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And therefore they have they have named schools Malcolm X. They know the man's name was not Malcolm X anymore. They, they, they deliberately do not want us anybody to focus on the transition mm. the change so they don't even use the name Malik Shabbat. Mm. They don't even talk they don't even refer to him as a humanitarian as you did. Mm -hmm. They refer to him as a civil rights leader. Mm. He's not a civil rights leader. Mm. That is a that is a misappropriation of, of value that's even worse than him being Malcolm X, mm. uh, the leader of the uh, the, uh, the, um, the national spokesman for the nation of Islam. They, they were not civil rights leaders. They were not into civil rights. Mm. Uh, the nation of Islam never was and never and, 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 and into civil rights. Their focus was human rights. Mm -hmm. Malcolm was, the, the, the nation of was trying to get us to take our issues of being mistreated into the United Nations as a human rights issue. Human rights, right? Which is where we sh should have gone, right? But they were trying to stop that. The powers that be, as they are referred to, didn't want that to happen. They didn't, nor did they want people to focus on the true teaching of the religion of Islam. What the, the teachings of the nation of Islam in America was not the true teaching of Islam. What Elijah Muhammad brought was not the teachings of Islam. He used to say, I'm talking of Elijah Muhammad, he said that my job is not to teach you religion. My job is to clean you up mm. and to get you ready. 
mm. for the one who's going to come after me. Mm. And this is important for people to understand just the depth of, the, of what has happened and what is still happening and what is going to happen in the future. And we so in the context of this, this review to kill a martyr, a martyr is one who dies for a cause, who willing to give his life for something that he believes is so important that it's worth dying for. This is also in the context of what we've talked in the past about the meaning of the word soldier. The soul is on a journey. And the object of that journey is to find something that you're willing to give your life for. Uh, I think it was Dr. King who said a man who hasn't found something that, that he's willing to die for by the time he's 20, 21 years old, he's in fifth to live. Mm. But, and then, and this is, the, this is because it is, it is fundamental to human life to want to to have a principle or an ideal, the, 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 the value of ideals is more is, is what you give your life for. And to kill a martyr is to kill or to destroy or to disc or confuse what it is he gave their life for. So to 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 say that uh, the brother who was Malcolm X remained Malcolm X after he died is not true. He no longer was Malcolm. He was he changed from Malcolm X while he was alive. And the change represented such a monumental uh, transformation for him that he it was necessary for him to change his name. Mm. It was necessary for him to change his whole outlook and his whole direction for leadership. And he said very clearly that the true religion of Islam is what was the reason for that. And he felt that it was this true religion of Islam that would really help the struggles of people in America for justice and freedom. And that's why he was killed. Mm -hmm. But the, the killing, the assassination was not the worst. The worst is what has happened since by him continuing to be called Malcolm X mm. and to have schools named Malcolm X and to have books named Malcolm X. And, and nobody even mentions hardly. You have to read real carefully to find out about the transition that he made that got him killed. Mm. And that is the real death. The real death is that he has been his martyrdom has been um, virtually erased from history because people don't remember, don't focus on the, trend, the changes that he made. Mm -hmm. And that's the travesty. That's the biggest travesty. And if we really want to honor the man, if we really respect the man, we have to respect the changes that he made to the extent that he did no longer want to be known by or considered Malcolm X anymore. Well, and that's what, that's, that is indicative of the people who killed him. Mm -hmm. Because they had the power to con control the way the schools, what the schools were going to be named. Mm -hmm. They had the power to control the media in continuing to re reflect uh, the old person, not the person who changed, mm -hmm. that he changed to. And that's, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not individuals in the nation of Islam. They don't have that kind of power. No. Uh, that power comes from the, the same people who killed Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. uh, this movie that you were talking about, I haven't seen it yet, but I intend to because the title is taken from the the ex, the ex, redacted FBI file where J. Edgar Hoover mm -hmm. explicitly says that his object is to prevent the birth 
of a black messiah. Mm -hmm. Yet that's the reason why he was infiltrating the Nation of Islam, the Black Panther Party, the NAACP, uh, the National Council, the, uh, the, 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 the organization of the black community was infiltrated by agents of federal government who came in representing themselves as members and actually rose to very high positions of power in those organizations in order to feed information that would lead to the destruction of those organizations. Mm -hmm. And it's still going on today. And we'll probably be going on when we leave this planet until we make a decision. To, I, hope, I don't think so. I hope I not. I hope not. I don't think so. And, I, and, I, and, I see, and what I'm seeing is the handwriting on the wall that is indicative of the fact that it's going to change real soon. It's changing as we speak. Yeah, because... And the truth will set people free. The more people find out about what was going on and why he was going on, the more he will change. Mm -hmm. The faster he will change. Because lies can only, corruption and evil can only exist in the presence of lies and deception. Once people get hit, once, once, they, once the lights come on, it's over. Mm -hmm. And there's so much light out here today that there's no way people can remain uh, ignorant. In honor of and and other in honor of Brother Al Haj Malik Shabazz, we give thanks for the opportunity to be here to speak on it today and not be gunned down physically anyway, because they're always trying to find a way to stop us. It is eight. And we need to stop for just a moment. It's 8.03 here on The Female Solution. We've got some uh, community messages for you. You stay close and we'll be right back to continue this discussion.
to you or your organization need space for an event, call the Forum Event Center at 2423 East 75th Street in Chicago for your parties, banquets, award ceremonies, repasses, concerts, and business seminars. Available seven days a week. Now under new management, call us at the Forum at 773-663-2557. That's 773-663-2557. Grand Rising, and thank you for joining us back here on the Female Solution, Higher Learning with Zelda Speaks, and Brother Lionel abdul Hop of Community Cultivations as we discuss a special edition of Black History Month with a emphasis on what they don't want you to know. But you, you, you're slowly waking up. We're all slowly waking up as we give tribute to the brother known who won't be, who hasn't been acknowledged. <coughs> Excuse me. They want us to keep calling him Malcolm X, but he did change his name to al Haj Malik Shabazz. And for the purpose of this show, as we have been enlightened, we will continue to call him by that name. And I invite you to read the blog that in which information was sent to me in reference to Mr. Shabazz. If you go to Zelda Speaks, <coughs> excuse me, dot wordpress.com, you'll see the article there. It's Zelda Speaks dot wordpress dot com. You will see the information there that was sent to me by Baba Kwame Sunhorse from Georgia, who sends me a wealth of information in which I am so grateful because it is this kind of information that will keep us on our feet, to keep us out of the dark into the light. And that's what this show is all about, Lionel, to shed light on that which has been kept from us for such a long period of time. But um, that's over with. The light is here. We see it, we recognize it, and we are moving forward. And we're having conversations about it, even what's more important is that these conversations will continue to keep us in the light. So if you haven't uh, seen that article, it's from the Times, I can't remember, but go to my, my blog, zeldaspeaks.wordpress.com. And I wonder uh, how many people can say, his name, and let alone know his name, Al Haj Malik Shabazz. They never want you to identify or acknowledge the truth that is within you. They want to keep us in secret. Go ahead. It's important to understand that the, uh, the Al Haj is the title. Uh, one who has made the pilgrimage, the pilgrimage to Mecca. It is an ob obligatory pilgrimage that all Muslims must make uh, in their lifetime, and uh, it's in Mecca. Uh, there's a house that is reputed to have been built by Abraham uh, for the worship of one God, and. Uh, over the years after Abraham, he became a servant for people who worship idols. Mm. Uh, and all over, all over the Arabian Peninsula, they would come and, and they would put those idols in the house that Abraham built for the worship of one God who did not have any physical form. But because of the significance of that, People began to put their idols in that house in Mecca, and Mecca became a a center for worship of whatever you want to worship. They they had it there in their house, and it was only when the religion of Islam was established by the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, fourteen hundred years ago in Arabia, that he all those items out of that house mm. and, and 
and reestablished it for the worship of the God of Abraham. It was not a physical material being mm. or a statue or something. And that is the monumental reality that we all have to come to if we're going to be saved because it is idolatry. It is idolatry and false worship that is responsible for us being misled, bamboozled, run amok, and led astray. It is the worship of material things, period, that has killed our spiritual life and put, and put the body above the spirit mm. as opposed to the spirit being above the body. And that is what puts us like on, on a level like animals. Mm. That can be herded like cattle mm. and sheep, to fat, fattened up and slaughtered for the benefit of the few, while the many just be, become just cattle, sheep, horses, and mules mm. for their exploitation. And this is what has happened. This is where we have been, and that is what is changing the resurrection of that idea of worshiping God in spirit and in truth and not in any physical material form. Mm. And not to put our own physical body over of uh, uh, giving it a greater priority than the life that's within the body. And that's going to leave the body when the journey of this life is over. Mm. And that's, that's what we have to get back in touch with. Mm. Uh, let's take some calls. Uh, 515-605-9325. Press 1 to speak if you would like to join the, con <laughs> join the conversation this morning as we go to the phone lines. Area code 706202, Grand Rising. You're live on the Female Solution. Grand Rising. Um, I'm very grateful. Thanks for asking. You know, it's very important what you share, and understanding is very important because we have to stop taking ourselves under someone else's control, and we have to look to what's the overall that is over all that exists. And these are the understandings that we are now coming into because you say information is power. Because we look at what we call ourselves, and words have a subliminal message. Because we say we're the black. Uh, sometimes, as the word people use to say, uh, bless you when you sneeze, it's really powerful to say, be less or be lack of what? Knowledge of self. And in looking at telling us as a people, now giving us a label saying these black people, they be lacking in what? Knowledge of self. And so we have to begin to look at how words are, what they say in their Helios, Biblios, is that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word no the word was with God and the word was God. The part of it is is that our words are resonating a frequency of a God. And how we inform ourselves and then even another word is saying that in we form this is just form man from the earth as it said in their book. The part is, is that we have to learn that what we speak, we give ourselves an unconscious power more so than the conscious power because we use more un subconscious than we do conscious. Mm. So El Hajj Malik Shabazz and him being a seeker of truth after being put into a cage and, and guided to understand, the first thing that he began to understand was how to use words along with understanding who the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was and what he was speaking to a people. So there are many parts of, of his story and others that were put into positions of leadership. So we have to look at how 
how is it that the planet is populated more with people of color than it is people who are lacking of color, but the people lacking color have the power of the people of color? Okay. Well, we probably have a power we give them. Mm-hmm. And we give it to them because we've been misled by those of the market lands. And uh, uh, the truth will set us free. If we, if we wake up and realize and recognize uh, that um, you know, we need to study, that we need to pray, and that we need to study, and we need to work, uh, those, are, those three combinations will produce the kind of conscious resurrection that will save our lives. And our lives are not just the, you know, not just what's going on in this in this life, but the next life. We have to back part of, of the uh, important part of, of of the processes of life is understanding the past, the present, and the future. They all work in tangent. And we have been misled about that. The only focus in on is the present without any consciousness of yesterday and have no idea where it's going to lead us tomorrow. Okay. And unfortunately, uh, that, that's got to change too. Right. And you said in boy, a very important part, the truth will set us free. Because within the word truth, the only vowel in that word is you. Mm. And how do you become free? Mm. That's what we have to learn to start looking at. What we're saying but that's the part where you say being still in prayer because the thing is is that once we begin to see how the words produce the energy within our heart not our mind because the mind is the brain is just the part that grew the body the part that we have to understand and and this is for myself that i've learned in that the most natural environment helps you to become that which is already in you. And being in nature and being in part of the earth, we get the necessary things that is for us, for our survival. This is why we, we're to be stewards of the earth, because this is what the creator who created all things that we exist in we have to understand he provided everything that we need to exist in and the part for us as humans we're on the part of a new evolution because they say god is love and evolution only says when you read it backwards it says know if you love mm. know what created you and you'll know the love that has been given for you to have all that you are powerful we have it. We just have to know that we have it and to tap into it and to share it. Because once you have this information, you can't keep it to yourself. It's like a good piece of pound cake, for lack of a better analogy. Because <laughs> I don't have some bad pound cake and I don't have some good pound cake. Some things are so good, you just got to tell somebody. When somebody... And mm -hmm. go ahead. One, one of the great things that I've learned in it is that, every, and this is why, you know, in Islam, they pray to the East because <laughs> when the sun rises, it shines upon everything on the planet and it rises and brings light to everything to be seen. And we have to understand is that we have that power, that sun within us. So what we have to learn is how to turn on that light. And it was said that when light walks into a dark room, darkness knows what to do. It will leave. Yes. And that darkness is not knowing who you are. Because even in the light, there's darkness because everything has a shadow. Well, you know, I don't know, you know, in, in the in the Islamic religion, we don't actually pray to the east. Uh, we pray to the Kaaba in the direction of the Kaaba. 
But if you west of the power bond, you turn to the west. You turn, you turn right. to the west. If you east of the power bond, you turn to the west. And the reason why we turn into the house is not because of the house. It's because of what the house means and what is its understanding and how it was formed. You know, they say Abraham, right. Abraham, Abraham saw was praying for a, a place to, to settle after he left his father, the idolaters, uh, that his father was a ruler over. And uh, a meteor fell from the sky. And uh, it fell at the, at, and, and it became the cornerstone of this house that he built for the worship of God. And a, and a community built, that grew up around it. And so it's not the house so much, but it's the, uh, the size of the stone, the black stone, that is the cornerstone of that house. So it's not right. correct to say we pray to the east. We pray to, a, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the stone as a symbol from God to Abraham of the, the promise of building his kingdom on earth. Right, and that, that's very much true because in studying, I researched and found that that was part of the worship in, in the seven times around the Kaaba. Is that that was part of the worship and in, in being able to go around that or they would dance around it and seven times. And so very much on point because a lot of people that don't know need to know what all of this means because it's all symbolic and the media and it's all represented and, and it's, rep it's representative of the, the movement of the universe um right it moves, and right, it moves in a circle from right to left and if you look if you ever look at the hives you see these masses of people going around this house and it looks very much like the galaxy the milky way right. galaxy uh, and then, that's what I'm saying, so, and that the, the part is coming from above, and that's why it's said about the part of what comes from above, what is above. It's also, it's also underneath. I mean, the same, the same, the same uh, symmetry exists in the molecular <coughs> atomic atomic structure. Uh, right. The small, the smallest structure. In fact. The more you study the, uh, what's, what's smaller, the more you can understand what's going on up in, in the heavens. And, uh, and uh, the, the, depth, the depth of understanding that the world is getting now about quantum physics and so forth is really transforming how, how our whole understanding of the material world. And, and you're very correct because within the atom is 99.9% space. The same thing is what was planted in, in looking at it microscopically, that's what it said, the micro and the macro. And being able to know everything within Rumi senses, everything in the universe is within you, where will you learn to use yourself? Because in the oneness is all, and in no thing is everything. So it's there is no such thing as nothing. If there's something there, you just don't see it. Right. Well, no thing. And what it is is that you have to understand the part of finding out what that thing is and saying that I know that I don't know, so I'm here to know. And that's what I believe we come. Submission is the way. Submission is the key to understanding. It's a humble attitude, a humble spirit of learning and seeking understanding. From the career and uh, working to cultivate a spiritual uh, disposition that will make understanding uh, possible. And that, that's the word that you're using saying spiritual. How do we connect the spirit? Is in the word. The word is ritual, the ritual of prayer, mm -hmm. the ritual of what we do in our culture to honor that which we know is greater than ourselves. 
I love that spiritual. And in the inside of that word is ritual. Because those who understand and overstand that there must be a practice involved in getting away from all the partying and to go within and to study. That's part of our spirituality that we sometimes neglect that ritual that keeps us connected to that which we call our higher power, God, Allah, Buddha, Yahweh, Yudhe, Wave, Jehovah, whatever you choose to call it, she, it, whatever. And it is that ritual that can help <laughs> us keep our sanity in times like these. And this is a conversation that is enjoyed by all. I hear, go ahead, you wanted to speak? It's a process that requires, from my, from my perspective, uh, a disposition, a humble disposition. A, a, um, humility is very important to the process of learning and guide, being guided. And uh, so I, I, I encourage people to be ready to, to try to be as humble as possible and to seek understanding as much as possible. And not everyone understands that. Some some say we say the same things over and over. And sometimes that's how we learn, by repeating things, by knowing that it's sometimes necessary, many times, oftentimes necessary to keep repeating the words that we need to hear. That's, isn't that how we learned our ABCs? Exactly. So... That's what we do in order to learn. If you want to join the conversation this morning, 515-605-9325, press one to speak as we prepare to go into our uh, next break here on The Female Solution. Be sure and join us tomorrow for self Cell Care with Jody Susan, our new host for Tuesdays. And on Wednesday, Naima Latif and Kareem Hamid, Repairing Family Relationships. On Thursday, it's the Women's Roundtable. And on Friday, Health and Wellness with Viata. Saturdays, uh, we're on from noon until 2 p.m. Our first Saturday is Jana, our correspondent from London, England. Nonviolent communication. And the second Saturday, Love, Joy, and Powers. Third Saturday, which was this past Saturday, uh, Move Around with Deborah, very uh, enlightening traveling show. If you planned on traveling, you definitely need to see that show. And on fourth Saturday, Wisdom with Mama D. And, <clears throat> excuse me, on Sunday, Soul Purpose Healing. If you didn't hear Wound Dolly G last night, you owe yourself a favor to go back and listen to it. And... You can go mark it on your calendar right now. It's, it's 24 yeah. hours. It's always in the archive, so you can always go back and listen to it. So you be sure and do just that. We'll be right back. Are you worried about finances, family, you know, jobs, relationships? Are you in peace? Do you feel stuck? If you answer yes to any of these questions, help us available.
Joanne Fiaca, your holistic life coach. These days, it's more important than ever to work on your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. Are you consciously breathing deeply in stressful moments? Do you have a plan or daily routine to maintain balance in your awesome body? Are you struggling to be disciplined in your eating habits? When you partner with me, I'll help you develop a personalized health plan that works for your particular lifestyle. You can find out more about me at yourholisticlifecoach.com, where you can also review my three-step protocol to guide you to a new health. That's yourholisticlifecoach.com, and I'm the author. You could live to be 120 years old and remain active, healthy, alert, and vibrant. Our bodies are made up of cells that are constantly rejuvenating. So if we take proper care of ourselves, we can literally defy aging. Join us every Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time to learn about self, cell care from Susanna Finchel on the Female Solutions Blog Talk Radio Show. Learn how to help your body and yourself feel rejuvenated each day through proper nutrition, sleep, frequency medicine, and many unconventional methods of self-care. I'm Jody Susan. Join me and my amazing guests by calling in at 515-605-9325 and press 1 to speak. We'll help you achieve a breakthrough in your health today. That's Jody Susan of Susan Essentials. It's our new host, and she will be joining us tomorrow, 7 till 9 a.m. So you be sure and join in. Right now, we are joined in our last half hour with Brother Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations as we are discussing Black history that mm, they don't necessarily want you to know, that you deserve to know. And it reminds me of the the childhood home of the Black Panthers. There is an article on Block Club Chicago, Fred Hampton's childhood home to become the community center to, to preserve the Black Panthers legacy and, the, and continue the party's work. Because not only, there were many brothers and sisters who were dedicated to the challenge of uplifting our humanity and the Hampton family was one of those families in which I'm honored to say, uh, my dear, uh, Mrs. Iberia Hampton and her husband, Francis Hampton, was the uh, mother and father of Fred Hampton, who was slain. It was a conspiracy by the Chicago Police Department, Hanrahan at the time, and a host of other, a host of other local officials who murdered Fred Hampton and tried to destroy the, the Hampton party, the Black Panther party, and it's still alive and well and doing what it needs to do to continue the humanitarian efforts, just like al Haj Malik Shabazz in making this place on this planet livable for people who look like us for people who want to be treated as humans and deserve to be treated with respect. And in that respect, I open the microphone back up to our guest, Lionel abdul Haq. And if you would like to join the conversation, 515-605-9325 and press one to, to speak. Lionel Haq, can you tell me how is it that we have have gotten away from the old ways of being. You know how we say, uh, I'm, "I'm old school for life." This is what I do. How how did that happen? How how have we gotten away from being in that realm of knowledge that keeps us centered? How do you have a lot to do with the, the fact that we? Um have been given so many images of arrogant, uh, materialistic, uh, uh, boastful, uh, mean-spirited people like uh, 
Donald Trump. Mm. Uh, who, who, then is, who then is reflects what they used to call during World War II, the ugly America. Mm. Um, America went overseas. Uh, it was this, this, this arrogant attitude of being better than uh, others, uh, this vain, conceited uh, uh, concept of of life, of, of what life is about, that, that seeks to exalt uh, what they consider to be confidence when it's an arrogance, an arrogant confidence, a uh, sense of being better than. Um, this is a, uh, an image that has taken us away from the God-fearing uh, spiritual um, life and, and disposition uh, of wanting to help others, wanting to be a servant. You know, a servant is not arrogant. A servant is not seeking dominance and control. See, a servant gains a lot of control as a result of his desire to want to serve it. Uh, I, it, is, it is a blessing to have to, to be raised to a level of authority based upon service. And that's another thing about Namik Shabazz that a lot of people don't, understand, don't focus on is the fact that once he accepted um, the ideals of, of service, he committed himself to it thoroughly and rose through the ranks of the nation of Islam based upon that disposition. Uh, he was one of the, the consistent people out selling the paper. He was one of the consistent people who was out promoting, getting people to come to the, the, the mosque. Uh, it was his energy, it was his enthusiasm, it was his sincere effort to to help his people that elevated him through the ranks of the nation of Islam to the point of being the national spokesman. Mm, mm. And it, 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 it is through service that you get blessed. God, the creator, Allah, blesses you when you are sincere and when you want to be of service. And the blessing that you get is understanding. Mm. Understanding is the blessing of the divine. And understanding takes you deeper into the problem than what most people focus on. Mm. And that's where the real roots of the problems are. As long as you're dealing with the fruit that's rotten mm. in the tree, you're not dealing with the real problem. The problem is not the fruit. The problem is in the tree, and sometimes it goes all the way to the root of the tree. And that's where the understanding comes from. Mm. The more you know about the tree, the better you can be a, you can you can affect the fruit. The more you know about the seasons that affect the crop, the more you know about how and what crops to plant and what particular path. So this is this is where uh, why I, 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 you know, I think it's important to be humble, to have a position of service. Uh, every, every major figure in scripture, whether it's the, the Christian scripture, the Muslim scripture, whatever, you will find people who were humble, who were not seeking self aggrandizement but who were seeking to serve and benefit others. And that's really where it's at. I'm so glad you said the that. Journey of, the journey of life is to be of service. Yes. <clears throat> and to prepare you to be a better servant to the most high is this is the testing ground to see how 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 good a servant you can be based upon what you earn in your service on this planet. Mm. Someone once said service. This is the beginning. 
Someone once said that service is the price you pay for the space you occupy on this planet. And I am honored to be of service to those who are less fortunate than ourselves, who woke up this morning in a warm environment. It may be a hole in the wall, but it's a warm environment. I am on a quest and a mission to continue to help the people here of, to be of service to the people here in Tent City in Chicago. And I wanna thank uh, Brother uh, Baba Kwame Sunhorse and Naima Latif for joining me this past Saturday. Uh, was it Friday or Saturday? I don't remember what day it was on Clubhouse uh, where, we, uh, where we continue our efforts and the conversation to raise funds for the uh, homeless here in Chicago, specifically those living in Tent City. Uh, 219, 2019, my little brother Douglas Robinson was murdered by another homeless man. They were both homeless living there in Tent City. And after his demise, I was given the instructions from the Most High that I need to help. I need to be of service. So I am being of service and I'm asking you to join me in that and being of service to the tenants of Tent City by going to email, emailing us at info at higherlearningnetwork.org. Of course, the website is higherlearningnetwork.org in which I have written an ebook for those who want to donate. No donation is too small. And you can go to paypal.com and uh, send uh, a donation and we will send you uh, an email uh, uh, email with the ebook entitled, I knew I should have followed my first mind. And in that, I share the story of incidences where I should have followed my first mind and that of my little brother too, Douglas Robinson. So that is my service to the tent community. And I hope you will join me in that effort to continue to be of service to those who are outdoors living in this cold weather because not everybody has a blanket. Not everybody has gloves. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes. 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 I mean, these people, these people who got all this money, this one percent 
I mean, they can solve all the problems in the world and still have plenty. But they're not doing it. So that's a, that's a travesty. Yes, it is. Because you, you, you cannot take it with you. You know, we it would be different if we were like third world, th supposedly third world countries who you go and visit them or you see them on television and you see how supposedly they are so dirt poor, but they share whatever they have and they share it with an open heart. We don't in, in Western society, we don't think like that. So my question is, uh, are they third world? We're third world in our thinking. No, we're not third world in our thinking. We're, we're, we need to be in, in, in a third world thought of mind as far as giving is concerned because they give, all, they give so much, the, what little they have and of themselves. I'm, I was watching this documentary on the homeless in, um, I believe it was India. And it's like people are living just like in, in, in South Africa in the shanty towns. It's like row after row after row. You know, the, it's almost like a little project. And it's, they just have the basic necessities, like a, a mattress on the floor, if they have that, and water, and just a little bit of everything. And they share it. And that's my point. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, three, one, two, eight, two, three. You are live on the female solution. Grand rising. What's your name? Where you're calling from and what's your comment? Grand rising. I'm calling from Chicago. It's the first season. Salam, so, sister uh, Rashida. Thanks for calling this morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Hello. Yes, we're here. Okay. I have a comment about the homeless because, um, there's a plethora of uh, houses that are uh, foreclosed on, whereas we could um, um, enforce the legislation uh, called the Stuart B. McKinney Act, whereas um, people who are homeless, that's the only federal legislation for the homeless, can occupy uh, those HUD foreclosed properties by a nonprofit getting involved. So I had um, years ago put a petition online about it, but no one supported it. Um, although I had no diligence to be with homeless. So the story of the King Act, Title IX of it was my proposal to the government. And it uh, included the veterans on the job training where they could go, they could be hired at a minimum wage and repair those or those properties to be occupied by the homeless. But the tax money, we want to support it, but it, 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 it's ever supported in black, black and cars uh, and living deals and places like that. So there is a federal legislation called the Stuart B. McKinney Act where it says to be no homeless. If you go to a, a, a specific guy, you see nothing, 99.9% of the people there are black women. So we want to team up and do something and really, um, we Americans, the body purpose, the only thing we would like to have in the United States, but the Reagan named it the Stuart B. McKinney Act, and I am um, the title of the those abandoned houses. Did I, did I hear you say that 99% of the people of, at uh, Pacific Garden is women? Did I hear you say that? Right. that. Women, where it once was all men. Now you're telling me it's women? Really? Yep. It was in 2000 and Okay, and and what was the uh, federal legislation that you were re re referred to? What was the what was that? It's called the Stuart B. McKinney Act. Can you the only federal legislation? Can you spell that, please? S T U A or E R. Or E W. I think it's S T E W A I T. 
Okay. E McCain. Spell Mc. Did you say McCain? No, McKinney. M C K I N N E Y. Oh, McKinney. McKinney. The Stuart B. McKinney legislation. The Stuart B. McKinney Act. Act. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's the only federal legislation for the homeless. Oh. So on my website, I posted um, if they wanted to get our people to do nothing at that time, but we can still do something because the legislation is still there. Oh, wow. We just have to get. There's so many laws in our land that we don't know about and we don't even so I said uh, as well that most people who, who go through the homeless, uh, homelessness have become very traumatized. So I put in there uh, a continued care service as well so that uh, they could get, uh, uh, we can get after that time of being homeless therapy. Hmm. Under the 504 Rehabilitative Act. Okay. Well, thank you so so very much for sharing that information. The Stuart B. McKinney Act. I will look into that. I, I greatly appreciate that because I had no. I will. I will definitely look into that. And uh, next time we check, I'll have some more information on that. So thank you so much for for calling and sharing that information, Rashida. Mm -hmm. You're and uh thank thank yeah thank thank you my sister that's very informative see that's what this is a close-knit community we share our resources resources this is what's called being of service you don't always have to be out there in it you can share information just like we're sharing online uh just now and uh we've only got a few more minutes before the uh show is over you lionel you want to give us some closing thoughts and your contact information you got about two minutes. You got about two minutes here. I just want to encourage people to to study, uh, to study, to work uh, in the cause of uh, making our world a better place. Uh, you know, you, you, you may not get paid for it financially, but uh, the community is certainly taking account, and uh, he knows your intent, and he knows what blessings you are, and oftentimes the blessings that he can give you are uh, better than material, monetary blessings. Amen. And, uh, I, I, I encourage people to, to, to focus on that and try to uh, put forward some effort uh, in doing things that you know represent good needs, uh, charitable acts, uh, and to study
Hey, well, thank you again. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, Shalom. Peace be well upon you and your audience. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank us for the work that we all do and continue to be of service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank us. Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because it, you know, this is not a a solo a solo act. This is all of us here together being of service. Uh, we are about to go off the air. We will continue on Clubhouse. So if you want to. Uh, make conversation or uh, give a quote or just speak, you need to press na a one now if you are on the switchboard because once nine o'clock gets here, you will not be able to speak as we go uh, live on uh, Clubhouse. And you won't be able to get those um, comments or questions in. If you um, have an iPhone, I do not make the rules. I'm just, I was invited myself. I invite you to join us here on Clubhouse. In about two minutes, we will be going live and you will have a chance to join the conversation in the after show. It is today at 9 a.m. And in the meantime, in between time, you can join us on facebook.com, uh, HLN TV show, or Zelda Speaks, as well as our YouTube channel, which is Higher Learning TV Show. That's youtube.com, Higher Learning TV Show. And do keep in mind that if you are interested in making a donation to the Higher Learning Network, um, all donations are tax deductible. You can do that for uh, to help get the generators for the homeless in Tent City. And simply go to higherlearningnetwork.org. I know I talk too fast. Higherlearningnetwork.org. And the email address to send that payment to is higherlearningnw at yahoo.org. Come. I want to thank you for sharing this message, being a part of this experience and reminding yourself that service is the price you pay for the work, the space you occupy here on the planet. As we play out our last um, intro. Uh, Brother Kwame, are you still with us? Baba Kwame, did you want to make a, have a closing comment? No, I'm, I'm the TV show. Listen to our radio show. Put it on the book. And be sure to get your copy. I'm sorry. And when we ask the question, when we ask the question, am I my brother's keeper, then something is wrong because we're all one. This is what And this is a good example of it, that we are starting, we are doing that now. And I am looking for the room and I cannot find it. And I know I did it, but I'll, I'll go to Mary Shelton because I know she's there. Thank press you. Your bell. Uh, I just looked at it and if you press your bell, it'll come up under the listings. Okay. Uh, pressing my dismay. Let me pull that back up. Uh, press my bell. Okay. All I get is follow, follow, follow. Well, Mary Shelton has started a room because I can't find it. I guess I'll go to her room because I can't find my room. So if you're joining us on, um, if you're joining us on um, Clubhouse, I'm in Mary Shelton's room. And for those who are on the line, 
you can feel free to join us here. Thank you, Mary, for starting a room because I can't find our room for Monday morning mindfulness after show. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Guess I wasn't supposed to find it. Well, uh, can you hear me? I'm loud and clear. Okay, wonderful. Well, I, I was searching around. I wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing either. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I did it last night. I put it for 9 a.m. this morning. Don't ask me why it didn't show up, but I'm sure glad you invited me to, to join this room. So, uh, Brother uh, Baba Kwame, if you're still on the line, you can join us in Mary Shelton's room because I don't have a clue <laughs> uh, what happened to the room that I made last night. Did you uh, invite others here to the room, Mary? No, I was searching for you and your phone. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm still searching for it. And I cannot. Ooh, what is that? No, I was looking for you and your phone, and I was just lost. Okay, well, we're still here on um, StreamYard, and my, I'm joined by my sister of the microphone, Naima Latif, executive director, with that great, big, beautiful smile and great, big, old, pretty lips and great, big, old, pretty teeth. <laughs> So I guess we'll just um, continue it here. Uh, we're on uh, Clubhouse, Naima, but I can't find my the room, the Monday Morning Mindfulness after show. So I guess you can just go ahead and proceed with the after show and maybe I'll find it. And maybe I won't. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yes. And I'm so grateful for this show today. I think it was uh, outstanding in helping us to understand that we're evolving. And you know, when people, it's just like when you take a snapshot of someone and you've captured a moment in time and it's that moment in time. But let's say you were to uh, put that photograph up and say, well, this is this person, this is who they are, this is what they've done. And maybe it's a photograph from 10 years ago. Well, it's not really an accurate presentation of who you are and what you've done because 10 years have passed since that time. So if someone were to define you based on that moment in time, it would not be accurate. So it's the same thing as, as what uh, your guest Lionel abdul Haq was saying about Malik El-Shabazz, Malik uh, El-Hajj, Malik El-Shabazz, you know, Malcolm X, who people have decided to take that moment in time and define him when in fact he, as all of us do, uh, he was evolving. And he evolved to a higher level of understanding about life, which if we were allowed to learn, then we also would be able to evolve beyond that moment in time that they, they tend to hold as his identity. And um, pardon me just one moment. We all have an identity that we identify with. Some have more than others. And it is time that we learn to operate in the, in 5D uh, non-judgmental as opposed to 3D where we have an opinion and we voice that opinion and that opinion is not necessarily always right. It's just good for right now because we said it and that's the first thing that popped into our minds and we don't always take the time to think things through, especially at a time like this, I'm thinking about uh, last night on Viata's show on Soul Purpose Healing, where she was talking about how people were chasing her around Whole Foods because she had she didn't have a mask on. <laughs> Once they took her temperature with uh, via her elbow, not elbow, uh, a wrist, yes, and saw that she didn't have a temperature, it was okay, <laughs> according to their thinking. Because their thinking was is is in alignment with the powers that be that keeps us living in 3D fear and not progress in our thinking as Brother Al Haj Malik Shabazz did. He was transforming his way of thinking, his way of being. Absolutely, and that's a challenge. It yeah. takes courage to step out on and, and be bold 
and step out because the world is against you. Well, it, it, it takes courage because sometimes everybody else is saying one thing and you're the only voice saying the other thing, but you have to speak with the confidence that you are correct for where you are in your understanding. And you have to choose to lean to your understanding and follow your own connection with the creator because the creator is never going to steer you wrong. And that's that inner voice that we all have. We all have the connection. We all have the capacity to hear directly from the source if we listen. And as you show people every Monday, the, the breath, we're breathing in the breath of life. We're bringing in the spirit of the creator. And so if we listen to the creator, give us the answers, then we have to trust what we're hearing, even if it goes contrary to what everybody else is saying that are supposedly experts, because all they are are people who've studied other people's theories. That's all it is. When you get a doctorate degree that, that shows how much you have studied other people's thoughts and theories and beliefs and memorized them. It doesn't mean that you have created original thought that is contrary to what is already established. It means you memorize these things that already existed. And so as long as you memorize what already existed, you don't progress. So if all you know is what is only been known before, then we're not going anywhere. We're stuck in the same point. In order for us to progress, we have to have new knowledge, new understanding, new discoveries, new revelation. And that means people who are willing to do that have to be people who think beyond the existing belief system. And that means sometimes you're going to be all by yourself because nobody yeah. else is going to be saying what you're saying. And it takes courage. As you said, it takes courage. And all of us need to get the courage to sometimes, what is the saying? In order to lead others, you must be first willing to go alone. Sometimes you have to go alone. Sometimes you have to be the only one saying something. But the thing you're saying is correct. And ultimately, if it's correct and if it's from the creator, other people will eventually get that same message. It might take them a little longer. They might go a roundabout way, but ultimately they're going to get to that same point of understanding. So even with al Haj Malik El-Shabazz, as he was evolving in his understanding. And, you know, when you live in America, all you get is American propaganda. And it's a very organized system of indoctrination so that you learn not to think you learn to do as you're told because you learn to fear the consequences of not doing what you're told just like the masks mm -hmm. what will happen if you don't wear it what will happen if you don't take the uh you don't take the injection if you don't get vaccinated what will happen well we've been programmed to fear the consequences for all of 2020 Yes. Every day, death reports every day, every day. And never was it focused on the fact that we have damaged our body's natural immune system by the unnatural way we're living. The, the smog that we're breathing that has already damaged our lungs capacity, the food that we're eating that's already damaged our cells. We have not focused on that at all. We focused on we got to find we got to find some kind of vaccine in order so that you don't die. We've been programmed for that for the whole of 2020, 12 months and beyond. So naturally, by the time we get to this point, everybody's in such a state of fear that they don't think. They don't think, well, what about if we change something we're doing that made us even be susceptible to a virus that could have damaging effects on our respiratory system? What if we stop doing things that dirty the air so that our oxygen quality was better? What if we stop cutting down all the trees that are producing the oxygen? What if we change what we're doing so that we are in better health and wellness and strength so that we are not susceptible to a virus? What if we did that? Now that's what makes sense, but that's not what's being promoted. So in order to step out and be the one who's saying something different, it takes courage. Because as, as we had an experience, you get attacked for not complying with what we have programmed you to follow. But, you know, that's why we're here to help people learn how to think. 
so that you can come to the conclusions that are in alignment with what the creator is giving all of us in terms of information if we would just be quiet and breathe and listen. Just breathe. <laughs> no, I can't sing. <laughs> of course you can. And we love your singing voice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like Layla Hathaway's breathe better. <laughs> well, you know, just keep it right there in the shower and now you <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said, baby. It sounds better with water in the background. You know? It sounds so much more relaxing with water in the background. <laughs> I hear you laughing, Mary. Yeah, girl. <laughs> yeah, I received it because I know I can't sing. Everybody know me know I can't sing. And even 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 the water pipes in the bathroom, they just say, okay, here she come. Yeah. Let's give it, let's give her some water because it ain't happening. <laughs> and I love to sing too, you know. And uh I never heard you sing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, give us a little, little something, something right here. Come on. Woo, let's see what song would I love. Mm -hmm. I did not say mm -hmm. other people love to hear me mm -hmm. sing. Well, huh? And then y'all know I did say I love to sing. I didn't say other people love to hear me sing. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> there, I love to sing. <laughs> there is a difference. <laughs> right. I got a shower voice, you know. A shower. I like it. A shower voice. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we'll sing at the airport and see how many people will, will stare at us. Yeah. Hey, they might. They might follow along. You know. Okay, especially if it's a song that they know. I don't. I don't know yeah. any contemporary songs, so you know I'm old school. I know well, something I learned in church, so I gotta. I know Layla Hathaway, Donnie Hathaway. That that I know. Cause well, I, I know that. Video. I don't know if you ever seen it, and it was this this woman. She was kind of humming, and singing the song. If this world were mine, I I yeah. and then a man came along, and he starts singing the male version. She was singing, and next thing you know, they had this beautiful duet right there at the grocery store. And was it in Walmart or was it the grocery store? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing it. Was watching and then applauding. The two they didn't even know each other. Just one of those spontaneous moments. Oh, how beautiful! Yeah. That's what the world looks like when everybody just lives in love, and you know, yeah. there's, no, there's no fear, there's no anger. You just enjoy in life. This, and you can produce those kind of moments. So that's that's all we want. That's all the world is really evolving to. When you can just live, and you can you can sing, you can dance, and nobody's condemning anybody, nobody's judging anybody, nobody's afraid of anybody. We just see we see the God in all of us and we're enjoying each other. That's all that we're striving to get to. And it's a simple thing. Just see the best in people and then it will be there because it already is there. Yes. So I, one day if I break out in a song, you know, <laughs> just follow along, y'all. <laughs> okay, so what 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 song are we gonna sing? Mm -hmm. The only one I know, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now, what, 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 that and Layla Hathaway, Breathe. Those are my favorite songs. Breathe, breathe. Oh, and anything by Luther. Oh, yes. So amazing. Love has truly been good to me. Yeah, okay. that one too. Yeah. I'm gonna leave that alone. I, I, I don't want to mess up Luther's memory. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hear you laughing, Mary. I hear you laughing. Thank you, my sister. And you know, that is really all it is. See, the thing is, we are all energy, <laughs> our thoughts create energy so if you have the intention to help someone then first of all you've created the energy that's helping them already mm. And mm. the actions that follow are helpful so all you have to do is just love people and have the intention for their well-being and you know you you look at what what a person is it's where they have evolved in their understanding that all of us are connected all of us are expressions of the creator all of us are worthy of love and when we have that understanding that everywhere we go we're going to bring that energy so it doesn't matter where you are who you are is going to be manifested 
by the way you treat people. So your brother Douglas, who he was, he was a being who was loving and kind and generous and helped people. So where he was, he was going to manifest that because that's who he was as a soul. Now he could have been that same being, could have been uh, a member of Congress, could have been a school teacher, could have been somebody working in a, in, a, in a grocery store, wherever he functioned, he was going to be that person who loved and helped and shared because that's who he was as a being. Mm -hmm. Now you look at Donald Trump. Okay. We know he had arrogance, uh, insensitivity, was rude, uh, didn't play fair, all of those things. That's who he was as a being. That's where he evolved in his understanding of life. And so that's what he manifested. Now he could have been that same person, could have been, uh, could have been living among the homeless people and, you know, been stealing their stuff or whatever, you know, <laughs> didn't, didn't have concern for other people's welfare. He could have been a school teacher, been mean to the children and, you know, kicked them out of class. I mean, he could have been all, whatever he was, he was going to, be manifesting what was inside of him. We just happened, okay, we elected him as president. So we got that behavior in, in that office. Right. We got that behavior because we put, we put him there. But that's who he was as a being. So wherever you are in your evolution, you're going to manifest that behavior. And we choose where we're going to be for our lesson in growth. And our life is teaching other people wherever we are. So your brother, his life was a manifestation of someone who had involved, evolved to a level of sharing and love and kindness and, and giving. And his life was also meant to raise awareness about the plight of those who we have neglected and allowed to live in suffering because we're not sharing. Mm -hmm. And so his passing was also designed to raise our consciousness. Mm -hmm. That was his life's purpose. Mm -hmm. And even a Donald Trump, he had a life's purpose. You look at what happens when you are rude, inconsiderate, uh, arrogant. This is what happens when you put a person who was in leadership with those qualities. So we experienced that. It was a lesson for us to learn. And you know, it was funny. I remember seeing a video uh, that uh, uh, with uh, President Barack Obama, and he was talking about what motivated him to go into service and, and you know, what motivated him to uh, work in the neighborhoods. And then, you know, you work in the neighborhoods and try to get things done through the aldermen. And, you know, they're all selfish and, you know, uh, corrupt and everything. So he said, okay, let me go to another level. And so he goes to the state house and becomes an elected official. And, and those people are all corrupt and, you know, insensitive. So he said, okay, let me go to another level. So he ends up in the Congress and, you know, those people, you know, selfish, corrupt and, and you know, insensitive. So he said, well, let me go. And then, so then he goes, he gets, becomes president. Now he's operating on all these world leaders. And he said, and they're the same people. <laughs> so, thinking that you're going to be at a higher level, even at the level of the United Nations, you still have the same characters, people who have not evolved past their own selfishness, mean-spiritedness, arrogance, because that's who they are. So no matter where they were going to function, that's who they were going to be. That's where they have evolved in their understanding. And you have, this is man, you have also people who are at that level who are very, highly evolved in their ability to share, to be loving, to try to be compassionate and make sure they take care of people's needs because that's who they are. So all of us are souls at a level of evolution. All of us are growing in our understanding and wherever we are, wherever we are in life, whatever station we are, we're going to manifest something that shows where we personally have evolved to in our own personal growth. And it's going to manifest based on how we're treating people. That's the, that's the criteria. How you treat people shows how well you have evolved as a soul toward that ultimate understanding of love, unconditional love for all. Yeah, I love that. I simply love that. We have 
the opportunity to do something different today that we have not done before. And that is to be mindful of others, less selfish, and to be of more service, as Brother Lionel Abdul Haq of Community Cultivations shared with us in the show. Service is the price you pay for the space you occupy on earth. So I want you to take that with you today and ask yourself the question, how am I being of service to someone besides myself? Mm. And that is an important part of life. This acquiring things has no value, which you figure that out once you leave here, like you said, can't take it with you. So how did you serve others? And that's one reason why I love going to funerals, you know, because you, <laughs> the whole going <laughs> ceremonies, now we've learned to, to even call them differently. They are home going ceremonies. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad you said that, Naima. I thought I was the only person. I've never said that in public. <laughs> She's, she loves going to funerals. And the reason again, because Mary didn't hear you. She's on Clubhouse. Can you repeat that, Naima? Well, I, I, because actually they're a celebration of the person's life. And it, and it, it makes you reflect on how you lived your life. Mm -hmm. And what you want said about you when you leave here, what did you want your life to mean to the people whose life you touched? And you realize that it only has the value that it has based on how much you helped people. Mm -hmm. If you just have a house full of stuff and that's all that can be said about you, then you've wasted your life because it mm -hmm. meant nothing. And people are going to divide up your stuff. So okay. <laughs> you know, what good did it do? Thank you. And, and so Homegoing ceremonies are a reminder of why we're here. We're here to serve. We're here to enhance life for ourselves and others, make life better, to enjoy life, help others enjoy life. That's why we're here. And so it doesn't matter how much wealth you have. It's how you touch people's lives. Like you mentioned, the people that, that spoke at Douglas's homegoing ceremony and how he had enhanced their lives. And then you realize, his life had meaning. His life had value. He touched people. I had no idea. And that's why we're here. That's the whole point. But I've been to some funerals and you realize that person, folks really didn't even like them. They couldn't figure out what to say. You know, even the person doing the eulogy had to make up stuff. You've been to them kind of funerals. Like the movie Whoopi Goldberg was in. Was it King's Corner or something like that? Uh, um, not Naima Latif. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, LL Cool J, and somebody else, where the father had just passed, and they were trying to to limit what they were going to put on the oh, headstone. Oh, that movie. They were trying to think of all these nice things, and and Whoopi just said, "Surly." He was surly. <laughs> he was mean. Yeah. All you need to know, he was mean. I do not want to show. Or give the impression that this was a loving man, a loving father, because because he was not. He was a mean old man. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Who wants to be at a funeral? Oh my goodness. That's horrible. That is horrible. Horrible. You're right. You're right. And so I mean, funerals remind you of the ultimate truth of who you are and how you've touched people's lives. And if people can't think of anything good to say about you and they, and they really glad you gone, then that tells you something about, that's why I love that. What is that movie? Um, a Christmas Carol. Of course it's based on the book about the, the guy who, you know, Scrooge where he had a visitation from three ghosts and one was Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas. Oh, yeah. Present. And um, in the future, he saw his funeral and people were dividing up his stuff and laughing, glad he was gone. And that's yeah. what changed. And he realized if you don't change yourself, this is this is going to be your fate. People are going to be glad you're gone because you have right. no good purpose. You're me. Right. So this is this is why, uh, you know, we have to keep evolving to that level where every life we touch, we touch it with love. And people remember that we were of some value to them, even if it was just remembering our smile. Yes. But it just because this is what we want our lives to <laughs> this is what we want our lives to mean. And it's a wonderful thing when you can be a person such as a Luther Vandross or somebody whose music 
gave you beautiful memories and and he was able to share his gifts and, and just be such a light. It, it's a one, it's like they never die because you're always gonna play his songs. They're always gonna have to get this picture and show it to you. I got it. <laughs> so these are these are the, the reasons why we're living. And we want to think, what am I leaving behind that will always be here, even after my physical body has been returned to the earth and my life force energy has returned to the unseen realm. What do I want to leave people with that they will always remember me by? And, and those are the things that matter. So if we are going to evolve to that level where people are enjoying our presence and when we leave here, they're celebrating our life and there's something about us that they always take with us, a memory that they keep because we gave them love, then that's a successful life. It doesn't matter how much money we had or where we live or or how many doctorate degrees or any other kind of titles we had. Yeah. How much have you loved? That's what makes success. And so you can see the success of a person when you go to their funeral and they've got all these people who love them. That's success. Like Cicely Tyson's funeral. It was, it was all a day. People came from all over the world to see Cicely. Yes. Queen Mother Cicely Tyson. It was broadcast all over the world. I was like, oh my goodness. Yes. And I didn't make it to Luther's funeral, but I didn't have to because his spirit lives. Whenever I am stressed out, I put on anything of Luther and it just calms me down because, and I think it may have something to fact, have something to do with the fact that he's a he has a composer. He just wasn't a musician. He had a composer who had a band. Uh, I, you all may be too young to remember Cannonball Adderley, a jazz musician. Well, his, Cannonball Adderley had a son or as an uncle, nephew, named uh, Nat Adderley Jr. And Nat was Luther's composer. Oh. He, he shared the story about many of the songs that he came up with. He'd run into the studio and he'd have the songs down, written down on a piece of paper. And Luther's like, oh, that's what we're doing now? We're writing songs on a piece of paper? He's like, yeah, I was at, I was at lunch. And a piece of paper was available. And a thought came into my head and I had to write it down. I said that to say this. This is my picture of Luther. I see him every oh. day. That? That's me interviewing oh him. My, oh, my. And I see that's a memory to keep forever. Yeah. And, and that's a memory that I, and I speak to Luther every morning, just like I speak to all my other ancestors. Oh. The plants because it, it brings me joy when I'm watering my plants and the plants are giving me life and giving us life and sustaining us. So it's just, it's a joy. Um, anytime I'm, I'm, I'm ticked off or I'm not feeling at my best. I just go water my plants and, and, and Luther and I, we, we sing a duet together. Y'all don't want to hear that duet, but. <laughs> hey, one day you might one break out in the song. And yeah, uh, okay, we just, might kind of doing a song together. Who knows? I might be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone. But I want to thank you, Daima, for uh, coming on and sharing. I know you've got another uh, show today. Yeah, let me uh, you know also our our dear friend L. A. Davis, uh, longtime female solution family member. Yeah, he does a show. Um, called solar landlord it's my house uh and of course we want you to call in it starts now 9 30 our time uh 619-768-2945 again that's 619-768-2945 and uh his show it's my house is on uh Blog talk radio, of course, and uh, you can you can just go to blogtalkradio.com and, and type in "It's My House TV," and of course it'll, it'll bring you right to his page. It's My House TV, uh, and that is our dear friend L.A. Davis. We're going to be talking about solar energy and and some of the things that we want to do for those who are living outdoors is bring them the power of the sun to heat where they are yeah. and bring them electricity and bring them warmth so we'll be talking about some of the ways to do that because you never know we could be like texas lights go out and we got no power and it's cold oh, so oh am i generated today what's that number again i didn't write it down i got blogtalkradio.com it's my house tv but what's the number again it's 619 uh-huh 768 768 2945 619-768-2945 because 
uh, just like what happened to, you know, we did a, a three hour show, what, a couple of months ago? Mm -hmm. about what happens when the lights go out and now the lights have gone out in texas yeah that's right and if the lights go out today are the question to ask yourself are you prepared are you prepared and if you're not prepared what can you do today to get repaired that's, Pre right. Pre that's right and and think about the fact that if you work together as a community like we were talking about earlier sharing people who have very little you've seen these villages people don't have much of anything but they share every little piece of bread, a little pot of soup, and there's joy and love and laughter. And you think, well, how are people this happy? They don't have anything, but they have love and they share what they have. So it's abundance and everybody's happy. That was, I mean, that's the whole story about, about the, 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 was it the uh, two fish and five loaves of bread that fed the multitudes? Yeah. When you share everything, it, it multiplies. And when you share it with love, you enjoy the companionship. There is no poverty. There is no poverty. So that's what that's the lesson that we're here to learn and teach so that we can live life and live life abundantly because we're sharing, because we're giving love. And that's our message today. All right, well, now. Naima, it was a pleasure to hear everything you could share. Oh. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate you so much. You're so welcome. And thank you for our listening audience who joined us here on The Female Solution. We appreciate you. We thank you. And we look forward to seeing you on the next show here on The Female Solution. You can join us tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. I'm sorry, did I say 10 a.m.? Uh, no. 7 a.m. I don't know where that from. It's 10 a.m. somewhere in the world, just not. Yeah, it's 10 where it's somewhere in the world. 10 a.m., 7 to 9 a.m., Judy, Judy Susan of Susan Essentials, self sale, C E L L, self sale care. And on Wednesday, Naima's right back here with us on, with Brother Kareem Hamid of the um, Repairing Family Relationships. Yes. Looking, yes. looking for my list here. I don't know what I did. Yes. Oh, of course, is. We're doing our series on our men only discussions. And this, this Wednesday, we are going to ask some of the questions as to what it is that these men think that they may have done incorrectly in a relationship that ended what they think they did that was hurtful and you know give them an opportunity to really reflect so that we can learn how to take responsibility for the people in our lives and we can learn how to be more loving it's always good to reflect and then we can comment on thursday um with uh the sisters round table yes and friday health and wellness with viata and we always know that's going to be a good one too and Saturdays, first Saturday, uh, love of uh, love. Uh, Jana from London, nonviolent communication for black people. Uh, the second one, love, joy, and powers. The third one is move around with Deborah, which was just this past weekend. And the fourth Wednesday, wisdom with Mama D. And then Sunday, soul purpose healing, 7 p.m. at night. So you yes. be sure and join us. And I'm going to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank us for making this possible. Thank you, Mary Shelton, from all the way from North Carolina. Is it North or South Carolina, Mary? It's North. It North is North Carolina. Carolina. All righty. So thank you so much for being a part of this experience on Clubhouse. And we will see you next Monday. And I'll type it in again. And hopefully it'll, it'll show up this time. I'm going to do it right now so I don't forget. But thank <laughs> you. <laughs> stay on, so stay welcome. empowered. So welcome. Uh, uh, for this morning? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep. All right. I, I did want to thank you uh, for everything. I went over my book. You're in my book. Uh, Silence isn't golden for all your assistance. Really? And yes. You're in my book for assisting me and Cornelia. Oh, wow. For coming on your show. So thank you again. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're just so grateful. Well, uh, wanna, 
exit and let you all know I'll be on uh, Blog Talk Radio on It's My House TV. Uh, of course, call in and comment 619-768-2945. All right. Thank you, my sister. Namaste. Shalom. Hotep. And we'll see you Namaste. next time. Namaste. Namaste.